It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've been here before. A few days. A few footsteps. A flag planted in silence. But now, we're going back, not just to visit the moon, but to stay. This time, astronauts will live on the lunar surface for weeks, even months. They'll explore hidden ice beneath the soil, harvest oxygen from rock, and harness sunlight in a land of shadows. This is more than a mission. It's a rehearsal for humanity's future beyond Earth. Welcome to Digital Butterfly. Let's explore how we're preparing for life on the moon. Our original astronauts only spent brief periods of time on the moon, usually just a few days. But to create the first manned outposts, future astronauts will need to spend extended periods there. They'll have to adjust to lunar conditions, which, as you can imagine, are very different from Earth's. One factor that limits how long astronauts can stay on the moon is the availability of food, water, and air. The supplies they carry with them would run out in just a matter of weeks. At first, everything would have to be shipped from Earth. Unmanned lunar probes would need to resupply the station every few weeks. These shipments will become a lifeline for the astronauts, and any accident involving them could pose an emergency. Once a moon base is established, even a temporary one, astronauts will begin their critical mission of creating oxygen for breathing and growing food. Chemical reactions can produce oxygen, and with water readily available, they'll have the resources they need. This water will also be used in hydroponic gardens to grow crops. Fortunately, communication with Earth won't be an issue. It takes just over a second for a radio signal to travel from the moon to Earth. Apart from a slight delay, astronauts will be able to use their cell phones and the internet just like on Earth, staying in constant touch with their loved ones and keeping up with the latest news. In the beginning, astronauts will live inside a space capsule. When they venture out, their first task will be to unfurl large solar panels to harvest energy. A lunar day lasts about one Earth month, two weeks of daylight, followed by two weeks of darkness. So, they'll need large banks of batteries to store energy from the two-week day for use during the long night. Astronauts may also travel to the moon's poles. Here, the sun never sets on certain peaks, offering the potential for continuous solar power. Plus, the poles contain massive deposits of ice, estimated at 600 million metric tons in the northern region. This ice could be purified for drinking water and converted into oxygen. Lunar soil contains a surprising amount of oxygen, about 100 pounds for every 1,000 pounds of lunar soil. In fact, mining the soil for oxygen will be a key part of sustaining a long-term presence on the moon. Astronauts will need to adjust to the moon's lower gravity. The moon's gravity is one-sixth that of Earth's, making it easier to move heavy machinery. And the escape velocity is much lower, which means rockets can land and take off more easily. In the future, a busy spaceport on the moon could become a reality. But astronauts will have to relearn basic movements. Walking on the moon is awkward, and the fastest way to get around is by hopping. Thanks to the moon's lower gravity, hopping allows astronauts to cover more ground and control their movements better. Radiation will be another challenge. On short missions, it's not a major issue. But for long stays, the risk of cancer increases due to prolonged exposure. Every astronaut will need first aid training, and some will likely be medical doctors, ready to handle emergencies. In the event of a medical issue, like a heart attack, astronauts could consult Earth-based specialists via teleconferencing. Robots could even assist with remote surgery. Astronauts will also need regular weather reports to monitor solar activity. Instead of thunderstorms, these reports will warn of massive solar flares that send radiation into space. When a large eruption occurs, astronauts will have hours to seek shelter. One solution for shelter from radiation could be to dig an underground base inside a lunar lava tube, huge remnants of ancient volcanic activity. These tubes could provide adequate protection from harmful radiation. Once temporary shelters are in place, large shipments of machinery and supplies will be sent from Earth to begin construction of a permanent base. Prefabricated materials and inflatable structures will speed up the process. In constructing these bases, astronauts will need the ability to manufacture and repair equipment. 
while heavy machinery will be sent from Earth. Small plastic parts can be fabricated on-site using 3D printers. Although there's nowhere to run a blast furnace, experiments show that lunar soil can be heated by microwaves to create ceramic bricks. These bricks could form the foundation of the entire lunar base, offering a sustainable way to build using materials harvested directly from the moon's surface. The dream of living on the moon is becoming more feasible every day. With each new step in technology and innovation, we are one step closer to establishing a permanent presence on the lunar surface. Our journey back to the moon isn't just about going further, it's about staying longer, building smarter, surviving where we've never survived before. And this is only the beginning. From oxygen farms and lunar soil, to solar cities at the poles, from remote surgeries to 3D printed homes and lava tubes, the moon will be our training ground for the stars. If this inspired you, if you felt the spark of what's to come, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell, and stay with us as we uncover the next chapter in humanity's off-world future. In our next episode, we'll dive into how astronauts could build permanent underground bases, using nothing but moon dust and sunlight. The moon is calling, and we're getting ready to answer.